Joining us now to analyze the fallout for The Times and for journalism, Molly Hemingway of The Federalist, a Fox News contributor and co-author of Justice on Trial, The Kavanaugh Confirmation and the Future of the Supreme Court. Beverly Hallberg, president of District Media Group. And Philippe Reines, former State Department official under Hillary Clinton. Now, Molly, obviously, you co-authored a book with a much more favorable portrayal of Justice Kavanaugh. What's your view of The Times reporter's level of proof in making this accusation of another long ago sexual assault incident, and also do you buy the explanation that editors just happened to cut that key information from the newspaper story in haste? Well, first off on whether I buy that explanation, those same reporters gave an interview on NPR where they omitted that information, went out of their way to omit the in information, and NPR had to edit in a clarification. So this idea that we can just blame editors for what was clearly something coming from the reporters I think is inappropriate. But when Carrie Severino and I wrote our book, we interviewed more than 100 people, we fact-checked everything. We got multiple sources for everything that we went with. And yes, we do care about rule of law and, and presumption of innocence, but we tried really hard to get the facts right. And I think that's very important. This shows kind of the corruption of our media right now. They fixate on a target and they try to destroy that person and they will omit key information, they will get facts wrong, and they will do whatever it takes to construct a narrative rather than just report facts. Philippe, some other news organizations were critical of the Times handling of this uh, because if the story is based on an incident, there's an alleged victim, the wrong party here, a woman who's presumably traumatized, and not only she has no comment but tells friends she doesn't remember this happening, the question is, is that even a story? Well, I think probably the outlet that has been harshest on the New York Times has been the New York Times, including its own reporters who showed the clip of basically the reporters throwing their editors under the bus. Look, the Times screwed up here. Well, there is no doubt about that. Obviously. They're defending yeah. themselves, but the Times screw up here. And my uh, interaction with them over the years has been there's no single editor. Times has a very bad habit of looking at things depending on where they are in the paper. They look at things on the front page differently than they do something uh, that's in the weekend section that's promoting a book. The question is, should they really be promoting the book of two of their reporters? If they it's are, common in the news I know it's common, that doesn't yeah. make it right. Okay. Uh, should they be looking at those the same way they look at news articles? And clearly they didn't. And this is a problem the Times has where their reporters express opinions that are different and out of the line of typical editorial standards. So, but let's not forget. Brett Kavanaugh is not winning any kind of Man of the Year award. So the notion that the Times Except, is... I'm sorry, what does that mean? It means that there are a lot of open-ended issues from his testimony. You are quoting, hold on, you are quoting the part in the book where it says third hand that the people, that the woman said she doesn't say it because happened. Because that's doesn't what got all the But coverage. there are third people that, there are third hand people that say that other things happen, but when those people are, are cited as third people, they're not valid. You well, can't have it both ways. Even on this, I just want to point out, it's not all the liberal media or mainstream media that are um, falsely reporting this. You even had, um, I want to read this, Jane Crawford from CBS tweeted that there is a real bombshell in this book, and that's Christine Blasey's Ford close high school friend, who apparently Ford said was there, said Ford's story is not believable and told the FBI Ford's allies pressured her and threatened her with a smear campaign. That is the real bombshell. That was buried in this opinion piece altogether. What I think this comes down to is that New York Times know who their readers are. The New York Times has certain bias against Justice Kavanaugh purely because they think his perspective on issues, especially on the Supreme Court, are a threat to their progressive ideology. So that's why they're pushing this opinion Let, let me there. just explain to viewers that Deborah Ramirez is a woman who, after searching her memory for six days decided that there was an incident she claimed to the New Yorker uh, which Kavanaugh exposed himself at a Liel party 35 years ago uh, and her close friend Leland uh, Kaiser and I think you wrote about this as well Mal but is on the record with this new book which is the education of Brett Kavanaugh investigation uh, as saying she does not believe uh, her friend's account. Right, so Leland Kaiser is Christine Blasey Ford's friend and we reported in Justice on Trial that she did not, she, she grew to lack confidence in her friend's story. And this new book actually does have some explosive new details including how people, uh, people who knew her tried to coerce her into changing her testimony. But this, what I'm talking about here is, you know, we're, we're being told based on no reason at all that Brett Kavanaugh is not going to win Man of the Year. That's what I'm talking about. These media narratives where they decide to tar someone who actually does have an 
an extremely good reputation built up over many decades from people who knew him in adolescence, college, law school, throughout his career, and decide to make him into some evil person, even though they don't have the evidence to back it up, and even though the people who were supposed witnesses for these allegations all say they don't support it. And even the Washington Post wouldn't pick up on this story. They didn't touch this with a 10-foot pole. But there's a real difference between saying 10 percent or 15 percent of what the New York Times said they got wrong, and all of a sudden saying zero percent about what has been reported about Brett Kavanaugh in his past, in his time, are just totally invalid. You can't jump from one to the other. It, it, it's a false equivalence. I'm, I'm actually not quite sure what you're saying, but I literally wrote a book after interviewing I, I, I more than 100 people who knew him. Every single bad word written about Brett Kavanaugh is made up by the media? I'm saying there is a larger issue in play about how the media take sides and try to destroy political opponents. Every word written about Brett Kavanaugh has been made up by the media? I think the media have perpetrated a false hoax against against uh, someone as when they don't have the evidence to support it. Let Do me, I think everyone needs to support a given are, political person or Supreme right, Court? Let me candidate? jump in no. here. I have another question for you, Philippe. First of all, do you think the president is going over the top and saying mass resignations at the New York Times? Obviously, he's upset with the story. Or did the paper provide him with the ammunition? And, and as, as long as you're answering that, uh, should these 2020 Democratic presidential candidates have jumped out of the gate to call for Kavanaugh's impeachment based on a story the Times later had to correct? I think those are different things, so yeah. unpack them. The, the 2020 candidates Few of them sat on Senate Judiciary last year, and at the time, they had been calling for a subsequent investigation about whether he perjured himself. Do I think they all should have at the same time said, let's impeach him? It sounds that's a bit much. Um, second of all, yeah, President. They, they haven't retracted it at all. It's been over a that's week, and they haven't come back. Hold on a second. Uh, Donald Trump says ma more in the course of a single uh, rally that is wrong. So it should the, be retracted. Back to the New York Times. It is important to note that it took them a full day to correct, even though they were notified. Oh, my God, you said a this, full day. A full day. Do you know how many things are said okay, on air that finish. are never corrected? If I could finish. It took a full day. That day was the day in which everything went wild with, with Kavanaugh impeachment. You mentioned it on your show at 11 a.m. what the facts were. It took them until nearly midnight to correct that. So this is an, a problem for the entire newspaper, and it's not even whether they get fired, but what accountability will there be? These are This is a pattern of behavior going back years of this newspaper getting facts wrong, omitting key details, and instead of people being punished, it seems like they get promotions, raises, and Let me rewards. Ask, that's, that's not a biased thing. The biggest lapse the New York Times has had in the last 20 years was weapons of mass destruction. They pretty much swallowed whole George Bush and the Bush administration and Dick Cheney's presentation about there being nuclear, biological, and chemical weapons. What so is fascinating, the Times gets it wrong. Accountable. All the What's time. fascinating I've to me the wrong end of that yes, a lot. As a, and you, you didn't like the Hillary mean. covers. What's fascinating to me is that you both have serious issues with the New York Times, but Everybody you come at but you come at it from the different perspectives. I want to turn to the what the Times itself claimed was an offensive tweet. Uh, it's, it's, I'm not even going to fully repeat it on the air, but it had to do with you're at a party and you're confronted with male genitals. That might seem like harmless fun. Well, Robin Pogrebin, one of the co-authors of the Times piece and co-author of the book we're talking about, uh, acknowledged this week that she had written that tweet, and here's what she had to say on The View. I drafted this with this in mind to have actually the opposite effect, mm -hmm. which is to anticipate those who would say, a guy pulling down his pants at a party when they're drunk is, you know, on the spectrum of sexual misconduct. It's not sexual assault. It's not rape. Mm -hmm. What's the big deal? I'm listening to this and I'm still thinking, harmless fun? Well, what was she thinking? Well, nobody was happy with this tweet. You even had Webster Dictionary send out a tweet defining what harmless was. You also had oh. people who were uh, just didn't like the article in general and this tweet in general, saying it focused more on the fact that the woman who alleged this was her, her pay and her, she's more middle class and against the whole white privilege of Yale University. And then, of course, those of us who think that this was a false allegation to begin with. So this tweet is just, I think, par for the course for these reporters who, as they say, in haste, are sending out tweets and writing articles right. that don't prove the facts. Which the New York Times should not be tweeting anything that they would not be putting in their paper. And it should the way, be the same standards, and they the way, all the time new, get this wrong. I was wrong. a newspaper reporter for many years. I insisted on reading ed, the edited version of every story I ever wrote because sometimes mistakes and nuances were changed, and I would push back. That's what you do.